Hey, hi, in this video, I will show you how to perform an ETL operation from Amazon S3 bucket to Amazon RDS PostgreSQL with using Lambda. So here, as you see that, you know, we will have a VPC. In that VPC, we're going to uh, enable the endpoint for Amazon S3 bucket, where is our basically have the data sources. That is here, I'm using the CSE data file. So we will have the our CSE data file being stored in Amazon S3 bucket. Now we're going to use the AWS Lambda here, which can extract the data dynamically on event of, of file creation in the Amazon S3 bucket and then load the data into the you know PostgreSQL, which is our destination here. So basically here the end to end process is happening within the VPC, which is a secure and uh, safest method to uh, you know do the data transactions. So here we will see that you know, how we can enable this a cost effective pipeline uh, which will extract the data from amazon s3 bucket dynamically as on the data gets created and load the data into the uh, amazon rds postgresql especially using aws lambda so this is my aws account i'm currently in amazon s3 bucket which is the data source side in this s3 bucket you know um, i have a folder called uh, demo data so what happens is you know uh, here in this uh, folder within the AWS S3 bucket, the files will be dynamically created. So as on the files gets dynamically created, it is causes an event and that event will trigger the AWS Lambda. Lambda will listen to that uh, event, extract the information of S3 bucket and the key name, and then dynamically load the data present in the CSE file and and then upload that data into the PostgreSQL RDS. All right. So this is the basically, uh, you know, the data source side. Now I will take you to the my destination side. So this is my RDS instance or PostgreSQL instance. So as you see here, this is the engine is PostgreSQL and this is our our RDS machine. Now in this one, you see that this is my endpoint and port number is uh, 5432. And then this is the very important point that you know, I have disabled the public access on that. And this is the my VPC and subnet as well. Okay. Now, before I show you the, you know, the code walkthrough and we see the demo of this one, I'm going to tell you certain things that is basically on the VPC, you know, to maintain the VPC endpoint to perform this operation securely within VPC, right? Uh, for that case, uh, we're going to keep our Lambda as well in this VPC and the S3 bucket will also be kept in this VPC along with uh, while our RDS is already sitting in this uh, you know, RDS. So basically, all the three resources of this ETL operations would be sitting in the same VPC. Now, with that said, I will take you to the my VPC page. Remember that um, my RDS is sitting in Oregon region, so we're gonna go to the uh, VPC in the same region or basically the same VPC where the RDS is, is, is sitting. So we have, this is the uh, VPC in this one, uh, we have the subnet. So these are all my subnets. Now within this, I'm going to show you that there are, uh, you know, the four VPC endpoints that you have to create. One is, you know, you need to have the VPC endpoint for Lambda because we are using the AWS Lambda to extract the data and load the data. And then we have the RDS as well. So you need to create a RDS uh, of type endpoint type equal to uh, interfaces. Uh, here is the, you know, the service name that is for uh, AWS Lambda. This is for RDS. Remember that, look at the, uh, you know, the endpoint type that is uh, interfaces, right? And then S3, so for S3 bucket, you need to create two endpoints. One is interface, the other one is gateway. Now, just to an example, how to create it, let me show you that. So you can click on a create endpoint here and then give the name of your endpoint for now, S3, for example, say. And then here you're gonna type the S3, right? So it will it will list you the possible, uh, you know, the, the interfaces. So you need to choose this interfaces like that and then choose the VPC where the RDS is sitting. Uh, then the down the line, choose the you know, all the subnet, possible subnets, then also select the subnet IDs like this. And then uh, in the security group, choose the security group where you have enabled the right inbound and outbound, uh, you know, the uh, uh, security rules, security group rules as well. And then finally, create an endpoint. So you need to do it for full time for all the four types of endpoints here. Right, so with that said, you know, we have also covered the VPC endpoint configurations. Now, let me take you to the my uh, important 
a resource of this demo that is lambda so if i go to the my aws lambda service page of this account and i'm in oregon region because the lambda and vpc and rds will be sitting in the same region so we go to this one and uh, we go to the functions uh, in the functions i have uh, created a function called s3 to postgresql upload okay so this is basically very normal uh, lambda function i've created and this is uh, as you see here this is uh, uh, python 3.9 runtime again you can use the latest python uh, 3.9 uh, you know 3.11 uh, or 12 runtime as well for now i have chosen 3.9 version so this is my lambda so within this lambda uh, you know if i go to the uh, configuration so here i'm going to show you a few configurations as you see here i have kept my um, you know the environmental variables like this so if you go back to the rds and uh, click on your rds instance uh, in the connectivity and security page you will have the endpoint information and then you go to the configuration so within the configuration you have the database name so these are all nothing but you know the uh, the credentials of connecting to the, your amazon rds for postgresql so that is something you know kept it here so we have the uh, you know db host name uh, we have the database name uh, we have the you know password here then we have the port number and then i have also kept the you know the db user as well and then uh, if you go to the trigger so in the trigger you know i have added the um, trigger as this s3 bucket and within that if you see that uh, so this trigger is will be uh, causing this lambda to be triggered uh, whenever there is an uh, s3 object is created in this particular s3 bucket underneath the particular uh, folder that is you know demo data now how did i create is basically by clicking on add trigger uh, in this one you need to choose the s3 bucket here and then uh, select your uh, bucket after choosing the uh, service equal to s3 uh, say for example something like this and then uh, event type equal to um, you know the event type equal to all object create event and then the prefix basically your folder uh, you know the prefix can be given here and then click on a uh, um, recursive invocation acknowledge has to be um, has to be accepted and then click on add right so which will um, which will add the trigger something like this now with that you know configuration um, then finally i'm going to walk you through the code as well so uh, anyways um, you know this uh, code will be uh, shared in this video's description you can find it from there and try to use it from your side but for now i will uh, have a quick walkthrough of the code and then finally we also see you know there is a lambda layer will be attached to this particular aws uh, lambda we will also show you that as well now i will walk you through the code from my vs uh, code basically so this is the same code which i have added in the in the aws lambda now i will quickly walk you through, through this one so here we are using a special um, python module called that is for you know postgresql python module that is uh, pcycog z2 right and then you have the uh, importing of logging os boto3 we are using boto3 because to talk to the s3 bucket and then you have a csv file is being used because we are using the csv uh, file as a data sources um, here we are actually setting the logging inform logging clients and uh, this is where our s3 client is getting set and this is the main uh, basically lambda handler function and lambda handler function has the two objects that is event and context and this is nothing but uh, we are reading the environmental uh, variables which is uh, where we are keeping the uh, you know postgresql database connection information which includes host name uh, database name username password and the port name right but again this can be kept in a, uh, you know the secret manager and from there you can also retrieve dynamically now whenever there is a file is uploaded uh, into the uh, s3 bucket so that will cause an event and that will trigger the aws lambda uh, this is where we are actually retrieving the bucket name and the file uh, key name uh, in, in this code and this is the uh, piece of code which will actually uh, you know get that object which is uploaded into the s3 bucket get the content in the utf8 format uh, and then um, from there you know you are actually reading that uh, csv file and getting the information something like this right and then that's where you know we once we have the information that is uh, which is basically kept in a csv file 
so that is where you know it comes in a csv reader data right and then um, so that then you know we are collecting into the uh, into the list if you see here we are collecting that into as a uh, as a as a list here okay and then um, next comes the piece of code which actually connects to the uh, rds postgresql via postgresql python module so we with using that module we are calling a connect function passing these parameters that is db name username password host and port and uh, this is where the connection object will be created with using that object you know you are also here we are also doing whether the particular table exists in the database or not if not exist it's going to create it uh, right and then next command is basically insert query command so this is we are creating that insert query command uh, something like this and that query command will be executed by using the cursor if you see here what is that row row is nothing but you know the number of records that you had in the csv file and that is collected in the list of the python so that will be iterated and uh, you are calling this uh, cursor execute command which will execute the insert query on the uh, on the postgresql database right when you run a command called connect.commit which will execute it actually right and then finally just to get ourselves convinced okay i'm just logging uh, the select uh, query command trying to get the output of that and print it in the in the cloudwatch log group so that i can confirm it that it is working right because the databases is is available in the vpc i don't have any a jump server to log in and connect that okay that's the reason this is the workaround i have added here now with that said you know this is exactly uh, the file look like and then um, here is the you know the lambda layer so i have created a lambda layer which you can um, ready madely use it in your uh, when you create a lambda layer basically so how did i create is with using this zip file if i go back to the uh, lambda here uh, in, within the aws lambda uh, if you go to the layers you can create a lambda layer something like this by uh, click on a create and uh, then the give name something like this and then upload that zip file which i will share in this video's description and then choose the uh, compatible architecture generally it is across 86 underscore 64 uh, then the runtime is is of course in my case it is 3.9 and then click on a create lambda layer so the lambda layer something like this postgre will be created and then that lambda layer will be attached to the function which i have done here right so this is the lambda layer which i have attached here if i show you this one this is the one now with that set you know our complete end-to-end -end pipeline is is now set so how does that pipeline looks like so this is how the pipeline looks like um uh, so if i if we go back to the uh, this one so this is how now our pipeline looks like now as part of the demo let me try to upload another dummy file now what i do is i just change the uh, name of the i just change the name of the file uh, to s3 i uh, know sample 4 why because uh, aws uh, you know s3 bucket is is you know the name sensitive so you need to always um, you know give the if you give the name uh, same name it will overwrite it uh, if you change the name it will have a new object created so just for the demo i'm just going you know giving the different name called sample 4 and then we uh, change the values something like this okay i'm just changing the some dummy values here so as you see here i'm just appending one one okay and then this is the first row is always the header now with this what i do is i'm going to save this file and we're going to upload this file into the uh, s3 bucket that is where our source so what we are doing is we are mimicking the scenario so if i go back to the uh, uh go, if i go back to this to the pipeline here uh, and then and and try to show you here so let me go to the here so here we are uploading the csv file and that would trigger the aws lambda and aws lambda reads that file load that file into the postgresql that is what now going to happen which is a final part of this demo so we go to the s3 bucket now and uh, upload that sample 4 file so i'm going to upload this uh, sample 4 file now so this is my sample 4 file which i have created just now and uh, select this file and and click on upload now if i when i upload this one um you see that now we have a all different file the fourth file that is sample 4 file file is is now uploaded now when you know as soon as you upload it this lambda should be triggered 
and you can confirm that by going to the CloudWatch of CloudWatch log group of the particular Lambda. So how to go that I'm going to show you that as well. So uh, if I go to the Lambda and uh, go to the here you go to the uh, you know you go to the monitor option and then click on a, a monitoring uh, option that is click on a view CloudWatch log. So it will open the another tab where you can check the you know the logs. So in the log groups, you're going to use the latest stream of the log that is created just now. So generally, the logs will be created in a UST time or UTC time. So we're going to use the latest UTC time, something like this. So when I open this one, uh, if you see here, we have a 22 records because you know already there were some records were already added. Now there are the records just now which are added are you know five one that is ending with having. Uh, you know the uh, one one which I have attached in the name right so that is getting automatically added all right so this is how basically you know you're going to build a ETL pipeline with using the AWS Lambda and the latest AWS Lambda is running in the VPC which is a secure way of reading your confidential data and uploading it to your targeted uh, you know destination that is RDS PostgreSQL all right so with that note I have shown you the things need to be shown in this video and uh, you know the required files will be shared in this video's description you can find it from there and try it from your side finally thank you for watching my videos a kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot uh, with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video